The state of manifestation, is that a state of attachment? It's happening or creating a spontaneous, without attachment. But once appeared, the attachment started. You are all keeping quiet and not daring to ask questions. Questions are prepared before. When you come here, they fade away. In the womb of ignorance, the knowledge was there, and that knowledge in maturity had become this manifestation. But prior to ignorance, the great ancestor is there. You have the knowledge of knowing only on the basis of no knowing. First of all, you do not know. On that no knowing platform, this knowing sprouts. But the basis is ignorance only. Although ignorance, when it grows into maturity, becomes knowledge and becomes profuse in its manifestation, still its ancestor is ignorance only. Prior to ignorance is that ancestral state of absolute. What are the signs to recognize a yani? To think that one is a yani, knowledgeable or full of wisdom, is folly. Once one presumes that he is full of wisdom, he wants social recognition, he wants status. That is the folly. Who is a yani? The yani himself does not know he is and who is to recognize whom. Out of no action, spontaneously millions of creations are happening every moment, and there is so much of chaos. Will a yani allow such a thing to happen? The Yanni understands that out of ignorance has come knowledge, and in the process everything is happening. But since the basis is ignorance, he does not interfere, because he himself does not know he is. The Yanni cannot focus his attention because he has no attention. Translator What Maharaj calls the knower, the absolute, gives no attention to anything. Witnessing happens. He doesn't witness. He is beyond that attribute, attention. And you, consciousness, cannot give attention to that. It cannot be known. Can he witness his deep sleep state? Oh, yes, I witness my deep sleep very nicely. There was this experience. Everything, body and mind, was there, and at the same time, nothing. That is an experience still. The experiencer is different from the experience. Experiences you can describe in thousands of ways, but the experiencer you cannot describe. Translator Maharaj says he cannot describe the Absolute, only what appears can he speak about. It cannot be said, he knows, it is there, it's not a question of knowing. Waking and sleep don't know what was prior to them. Consciousness doesn't know that state when it was not there. The Absolute knows, but it doesn't belong to the known. Unknowingly, the knowing has started spontaneously. Once the knowing disappears, then there is nothing. Knowing gives rise to the elements. When the knowing disappears, you remain. So long as the knowing is there, make use of it and inquire. I am stung by a scorpion. What is the stinging? The stinging is this I amness. Because you cannot tolerate the sting of I amness, you are running from place to place. To nullify the poison of that sting, watch the I amness. Observe your knowingness. The effect of that sting is the waking state, sleep state, hunger, thirst, etc. Catch hold of that sting, that knowingness. Is bondage necessary to become free? First you understand what the bondage is. Track yourself down continuously for 24 hours. Once you realize, I cannot be a body or a mind, then naturally you are there. After all this talk, do you have any necessity for the sound of words? For any talk? Is there any necessity for words? For true spirituality, is there really any need for words? August 13th 1979. The Guru is the greatest power, controlling the outer world as well as the inner. He is more powerful than a king. That's why he is the greatest cheat. He cheats you out of nothing, but you think you lose everything. 
If that is your experience, it is quite appropriate. He has appropriated everything, including yourself. That means that you are not a different entity than he. There is no more left of you, only the guru. Love makes him the greatest cheat. The love is given to each one according to his needs. If there is no need, can there be love? From that perspective, no. But the absolute has always been associated with that concept. Why do we describe it as love? He does not know himself. He does not know what he is. He doesn't need anything. He does not need to call himself I am. The Absolute is called Yani by ignorant people only. The Absolute doesn't call himself the Absolute or Yani. Why have those who are ignorant idolized the Yani as love? For the ignorant, it is a matter of convenience. So long as he has not reached that Yani state, he must have some motive force. To get that, he calls Yani full of love, compassion, kindness, etc., these are confirmed or imposed by the ignorant. Is that a correct viewpoint from an ignorant standpoint? Yes, for the ignorant. There is an idol of Vitaba. People go and pray to him. Because of your kindness, I survive, etc. The ignorance is talking. Why does the ignorant person keep that stone idol? Because he needs to be alive. He wants to perpetuate his I amness to continue. That's why he is worshipping that stone, the need to be. Isn't it also one of the ways that the divine leads the ignorant back to the absolute? Yes, there are a number of ways or paths for the ignorant. Wouldn't unconditioned love be faith and form? From my standpoint, love is the quality to be. Beingness is love. Only when this I amness appears is there love. Can the love prevail if the I amness is not there? You have the urge to be, to continue your beingness. That is the love. All this manifestation is the ocean of that being. You call it the ocean of Brahma or the ocean of Maya. Beyond Maya, beyond the ocean? Where's the question of going beyond? There is beingness, beingness extinguished. It does not go beyond anything. Does it require an airplane, a Boeing, to go somewhere? From where it has come, where did it go? Prior to coming and going, you are. That I amness is pulsating I am, I am. The feeling of I amness is there because of the essence of the food body and the vital breath. When the food essence and the vital breath are gone, that pulsation of I amness will not be there. Beingness goes into no beingness. For the sprouting of any seed, water is necessary. Similarly, for the sprouting of this knowledge, I am, water and food essence are necessary. In the essence of the food, the quality of I amness is in a dormant state. The Atman, the core self, he himself sees I amness through the juices or essence of the food. The consciousness is common to all, universal, spontaneous, one. Why does it appear in so many different forms? That is its native quality. Although beingness is one, it manifests in plenty, many multitudes. What is sattva guna? The quintessence of the food essence is that I amness, which is sattva guna. Sattva guna equals beingness. The beingness is activated in the manifest world through rajas and tamas, gunas. The rajas is activity. The tamas is the pride you take in doership or authorship. Sattva guna is only beingness, just to be. These three gunas have sprung out of the essence of food. If the food is not there, that I amness will go. All the qualities will vanish. That flame of I amness, which we see in the present condition with the help of our intellect, it seems that there is a development, a sort of evolution going on. What does Maharaj think? Which way is it moving? Toward destruction. Whatever might be the evolution, finally it will be heading toward dissolution. Turning to what you were speaking about earlier, is there something you either do or don't want to protect? I don't know. 
All this depends on the consciousness, and you don't want to leave the consciousness. Not even the consciousness of consciousness do I want. I thought of bringing cotton to stuff in my ears when Maharaj is speaking of the self. Who says this? I don't know. Why does it have to be somebody? Who says this? Words, just words. What is the use of words if consciousness is not there? Consciousness is there. Why imply that that consciousness does not know? What is the meaning of this? Explain what you have to say. What is the need of attaching any concept to whatever there is? If you feel it should be there or it should not be there, what is there at the bottom of that? Whatever there is, there is. It is evident that you feel that you are, and therefore it sprouts in you. When you feel that you are, all the trouble starts. If that feeling is not there, no trouble exists. Why should it give trouble? You attach names and concepts to that which is. Would you leave it alone? Who says this? Understanding that appears in consciousness. So who is really troublesome? Is the world troubling you or the consciousness which appears on you? Nothing troubles me if I shut up. That you are sitting there, that itself is going to be troublesome to you. This is your trouble. You are not in a position to sustain that consciousness, and you cannot bear it. When the body was not there, when the consciousness was not there, what were you? You are not in a position to understand that. Before the body was and consciousness appeared, it was whatever it was. Now that you are, you are conscious. Is it because you want it, or did it just come automatically, spontaneously to you? It appears spontaneous. You are conscious now, spontaneously, not because you want to be. That's a fact, isn't it? Yes, I think all this idea of spirituality, of trying to give a meaning to that consciousness, is the only trouble. When consciousness wants to extend itself and be all those things. No, that is not troublesome for you. The troublesome thing is the consciousness appearing on you. It is only because of that that you are giving names or not giving names, doing something or not doing something. That is the root of the trouble. If consciousness would just be itself and not try to apply concepts to everything, there would be no trouble. This is all imagination. It is very simple. All the experiences that we call life happen in consciousness. And the meaning of life is just to experience consciousness everywhere. So when the end comes, then that's it. Can our consciousness just see and face that end? Can you stay in that? But what doesn't allow me to stay in that void is looking, searching, trying to do this or that. When the consciousness is there, so is the vital force. Thoughts are flowing and a lot of words are coming. That is your mind. Just understand that you are not concerned with the consciousness. It will still be there. It will still continue, but you are not identifying with it, saying, I am this or I am that. There should not be any difficulty because the self-evident fact is that you are. Why don't you stop there and at that point? See what the state is. Have you understood the meaning of consciousness? Consciousness is everything that appears. Who is saying this? The feeling is, I am. Who experiences this? Consciousness experiences itself. Yes, listen to these dialogues for some time more. Whatever is going on, listen for some time more. Thinking, I have understood everything correctly. That itself is the first mistake. Space is created and thereby the consciousness, which is really non-personal, has become a person limited to the body and mind. You feel that the consciousness is limited to the body and mind. But if the consciousness is accepted as non-personal, then there is no trouble. Because the knowledge I am is there, we conduct all activities. In the morning when you wake up, you get that first guarantee, that conviction of I am. Then because you are not in a position to sustain or tolerate that I amness. You bestir yourself. You get up and move around here and there, and the activity starts. You involve yourself in all the activity. 
because you want to sustain that I amness. Later on, that I amness forgets itself in deep sleep. Only then are you peaceful. There is peace in meditation. Why are you going to meditate? To tranquilize the I amness? With I amness began all misery. You must spontaneously feel the superficiality of I amness. How? That attention, that I amness, is always there in the waking state, but we are not on the alert to watch it. There is no other attention to be followed. Be attentive to that attention, I am. Is there something that remains in the deep sleep state? Whatever is there in the waking state merges in the deep sleep and is in a dormant condition. What is right action? Let the actions happen through you. Don't take yourself to be the doer. There will be actions through you. Don't say that these actions are good and those are bad. It is not your responsibility. The one who thinks he is the doer is a slave to mind inclinations, mind conditions. Viani witnesses the consciousness acting. He has no involvement in the actions of the consciousness. It seems to be an addiction of the consciousness to worry about things around. Yes, addiction and also entertainment. Suppose I spill water. Immediately I take the towel and wipe it up. But I do not feel that I have done something foolish. It has just happened, just as the towel is soaking up the water without thinking that it is doing so. What a strange love for this I amness. Although it is strange, it gets manifested in concrete forms. We all hang on to concepts about saving the world, doing good. With all the great concepts and ideas great people have had, where are the saved and the saviors today? What do you over there want? I would like everything to be in harmony, non-chaotic. Don't hang on to a name and form. Get rid of name and form. Why is it so difficult to understand that simple thing? Because whatever you have understood you are clinging to, embracing. Get rid of that. Whatever you have understood from this world, you are hanging on to. Give it up. That way you understand yourself. Give that up also. August 14th, 1979 How many years were you with your guru? Nearly six years. What was the purpose of his yama yoga, whatever it may have been? He teaches that humanity is ready to take a big step in consciousness. An era of enlightenment can be created now. Until now, all the sages, saints, and saviors that the world has had have been working on ideas. Ideas cannot make that change, but if a small portion of humanity raises its consciousness level through the type of meditation that he has provided, the effect will be a higher level of consciousness generally. The whole consciousness is already there. So what are you going to change? How are you going to change? But it is a fact that a change in consciousness can take place in any particular form. Yes, it can be changed, but it cannot remain permanent. All right, it cannot be permanent, but is that a reason why that improvement in consciousness should not be made? You can change it for the better, but who is to enjoy that? That is a very important point to clear, a difficult point, you know. We know the world is going to explode into pieces, and some people say, let it destroy itself, it is impermanent. People won't allow that such a change in consciousness can take place now. That which is spontaneous, that which has come without any reason, how are you going to stop it? Who has made this whole thing? Find out from where this talk is emanating. What is the source? The source is the little touch of I amness, that pinprick which has no dimension. But just see what a manifestation it has created. How that talk is flowing out, but from where? From that little pinprick, that dimensionless touch of I amness. You are angry with me and you feel it. What will happen? You can't kill me. I will increase more and more. A million fold I will increase. I am speaking from that angle. Can you destroy me? Whatever is dead you see is the food of this illusion, the mind. It can absorb any number of deaths. It never dies. Maya will still be there. 
It is astonishing to us that Maharaj doesn't seem to have love for this I amness. He seems to be somewhere else, not involved in it. You mean to say that I should love that trouble? What will happen if I love that self? I will suffer more pain or I will get more money. What's the use of that? Translator Maharaj says that if you bring more and more money and give it to him, what will happen? There will be a monument, beautiful stones decorated and worship. That is of no use to him. Maybe not for him, but that might be useful for somebody else. It will be useful only for other human beings, that's all. Where did Maharaj get the courage to stand completely alone? Who requires courage? It is your nature. Why should I bother about this body? Just last night, 25,000 people died in Gujarat in just one night. Why should I bother about this body here? I had faith, devotion, so many things. This consciousness, this pinprick, I know its complete nature. Nothing remains, no faith, no devotion, nothing at all. Whatever I used to have in those days, all is gone. Translator the I that met his guru and the I speaking now are two different levels. What is the use of the manifested world, then? There is no question of use or no use. That is the nature of consciousness in which the world appears. The world has a use for one who considers himself the body. Through your senses the world appears to be real. But it is only temporary, for a short duration. It is just like a sickness. When you are feeling sick, it's the sickness of that illusion, maya. We are incarnated in a body, then how can we not be the body? If you consider yourself to be a body, you have more to lose than to gain. If you don't consider yourself the body, then what can you say you are? But if you cut my leg, I scream. When I bang this ashtray on this metal container, it produces a loud ping. Look. This also feels pain. It is shouting also. Now it is quiet. You are wrongly identifying yourself with the body. You are not that. It is for you to realize it. There are sometimes glimpses when I don't feel the body and there is no time. It is timeless. Right. Although most of the time you are identifying with the body. If even for a short while you feel you are not the body, that's enough. Out of ignorance, the knowledge I am comes into being, and into ignorance, where it doesn't know itself, it will dissolve again. After understanding this, you can go, and whatever you do doesn't matter. It's all God's doing. You are not the doer anymore. You never were. When the television set is burned or destroyed, will the people in the movie feel the pain and die? You have no form, no shape. You are like the sky. The vital breath which you take in, will it feel any pain when you die? It will just merge into the air again, as it was before. But just to sit here and listen will not do. You have to meditate. August 15th, 1979 During the state of beingness, there are two main states, waking and sleeping. What was before these states? Are you born or is it the waking and sleeping states that are born? The waking state is the reminder that I am, and deep sleep is forgetting I amness. What else is there except the birth of these two states? Why don't you talk on this, this state of memory and no memory? If these are not there, what is it you want? For acquisition of which knowledge have you come here? If you agree with what I say. Why do you want to come here tomorrow? To get what? I don't want to gain or acquire. I want to lose. I want to get rid of this realm of concepts. If these two states are not there, could there be concepts? Without waking and sleep states, what remains? Whatever that is, without memory and no memory, that remains. The waking and sleep states are impermanent. It is all the greatness of that chemical, that great spirit. Out of that principle, these states and this manifestation, this world, comes. You are not the deep sleep and waking states. And without these, you are not. 
Wherever you may roam, this talk will occur to you again and again. In the womb, this I amness in the form of ignorance is there. The child is born, and after a couple of years, that ignorance becomes knowledgeable. I am. Before understanding this I amness, there is Balakrishna, the child ignorance. Later on, it understands itself. That is knowledge. This knowledge cancels out the Balakrishna ignorance. In this Krishna state, Lord Krishna expounded the knowledge. And after that, he merged in his original state, the Absolute. So long as that ignorance, knowledge is given, each cancels the other, like this flame. So long as that ignorance is there, that flame of knowledge will be there. When that ignorance is exhausted, finished, that flame of knowledge will also be finished. Who directed you to this place? Ananda Mai, Krishna Bhai, and some friends of Sri Ramana Asram. What is your native place? We are both from France. Having performed all this physical and mental discipline, what is it that you want to be? My own self. Has your guru indicated what your self is? It is something which is already there and we have to find it out. Who is to search for it? I have to remove all the obstacles which prevent me from really living in the present. Who is going to remove the obstacles? I am. Who are you? There is an element of consciousness which is trying to find out. This consciousness? Who told you about consciousness? I have been longing for this path. There is something which drives one, leads one to this path. Why do you get entangled in words? You know that you are. No one has to tell you that you exist. You know it automatically. Obstacles prevent this consciousness. Let us deal with these obstacles some skatas later. Deal with the self, the knowledge I am. This I amness is there first, isn't it? Primary? That I must be there first before you receive this sickness of samskara. How long will you be in Bombay? Just five more days. If you are already in the quay and get the number for this spiritual knowledge, then any amount of obstacles will be brushed aside. But if you are not in that line, you will be roaming about. Initially, you have to understand that the knowledge I am is the product of the food essence. When you know that you are, the world also is, as salt is in seawater. Similarly, in the body, in combination with the vital breath, the consciousness appears. It is the consciousness that feels pain or pleasure, not the body or the vital breath. Once you know that you are not the body, all the concepts about pain and pleasure will disappear by themselves. Are you convinced that this is true? Yes. Here you get the knowledge of what you are. Now you have to experience it yourself. To keep quiet and watch yourself is called meditation. Remaining in what you have heard here is called spiritual practice. The Guru, God, your own knowledge, these three are one. If you know that, you become quiet. Guru means knowledge, and knowledge means I am. I amness is itself the Guru. August 16th, 1979 When people go about on their search for spiritual knowledge, they don't think for themselves. They only think of what knowledge, concepts, they have already acquired. Many who come here have read I Am That. They come here to see as a curiosity who this person is. They have a look and then they go away. If you want to get something more, then sit quietly and listen for as long as you can and try to understand what is said. What is to be understood? Have you understood? I have difficulties accepting. I watch this incredible resistance building up. Who says that? The difficulty itself. Whatever it is to be understood is there. One, that state in which you were before you acquired this knowledge, I am, is the real state. Only after you got this knowledge, you identified with the body-mind. Whatever you have acquired, including the body-mind, 
that will go. And it is useless, and that is that. But your original state before you acquired the body is the truth, is the real estate, and it will remain. Infancy has grown into youth, middle age, and old age. During all these stages, that enjoyment you had of being, of being alive, of existing, all that is false. All these stages will disappear, and that which understands, even that will go. Concerning this coming and going that Maharaj talks about, are they experiences of the body or of consciousness? Through what do you derive experiences? Through the senses. What is the original cause of your existence? What is it a mixture of? My existence is this consciousness and all the happenings are already contained in consciousness. I don't agree that you can lose it, as you say. The body may go, but all the experiences in consciousness, consciousness itself, don't go. What goes is the particular form of this body, but the knowing, which is consciousness itself, doesn't go. That will appear again in another form. How did you get your form? What is the cause of that form? That is another matter. No second and no third and not another. I am talking to you. It concerns you. I am asking you about the first moment of mix-up. The body, this form, is there. What is the root cause? Two people getting together. These two people getting together, is it not that same knowing prolonging itself? Consciousness itself keeps this movement. I want to know the name and form of that mixture. All name and all form. You are not hearing what I am talking about. It is not reaching you. Keep quiet. Do you understand the cause of your calling some person your parent? Is it by the bodies or the essence of the bodies? The essences. What exactly has happened there? I don't know. You presume you have become a yani and you are going to write a book, aren't you? No, he is presuming that I am going to write a book because I am seeing a yani and that's why I am in this discussion. In that state in which the mind was not, put your attention there. Pay attention to that state. You are all just like people who visit many shops, spiritual shops, to get a taste of various delicacies, tasting bit by bit, little by little. If Maharaj has answered all his questions, why are all these questions coming through his mind? I am part of the questions. It is no solution talking. It appears, do you like that? Pay attention, and it will happen. You must learn to live without identifying yourself with the body. All activities, even the mind flow, come from the vital breath. Give attention to the consciousness. That is meditation. Thoughts grab us and take us away. Thoughts have so much power because of the identification with the body. It is very difficult just to watch pain. I become afraid. What is watching pain is yourself. With consciousness you have to hold consciousness. Give attention to this I taste. Don't give attention to fear. Give attention to what you are. Once you know what you are, you become fearless. Remove the concept of death from your mind. There is no death as such. I am sure you are not going to die. That is only a concept or idea. Your identification with the body has continued since childhood. So in order to get rid of it also takes time. For the beingness to sustain itself, there is occupation. Whatever you gain has no value. And the one who gains also has no value. You will come to understand the hollowness of this game. Only in your ignorant phase you take everything as so important. We give undue importance to things that come and go. I am talking from the standpoint where I do not know of myself that I am. I don't belong to the realm of waking and sleep states. How can I presume that I am like this or like that? You presume that I am something or somebody. Could Maharaj talk about posture, Hatha Yoga, a little bit? I don't deal with physical disciplines, nor with yoga, nor with anything you get from it. What I am trying to expound is this. You are I only. I am you. I know that you are I only. But you don't know. 
So I am trying to give you that introduction, that acquaintance. By performing these physical yoga asanas, etc., you get a certain satisfaction. But that is not spiritual knowledge. Do people acquire powers through the yoga process? In the yogic process, some people acquire powers, but it does have an end. It is not the ultimate, the eternal. This absolute, this eternal, people do not get instantly. People get involved in powers and miracles and revel in that only. They will be busy with that, but not the ultimate. They will undergo rebirths. August 17, 1979 The experience of consciousness comes through the body. And when you start looking at the body, it is nothing but food. There are so many propensities in me, the propensities of food, of the senses, of attachment, of thinking. Call it anything you like. I hear Maharaj as a sort of intellectualized music, something which is not intellect, but the music that comes out of the intellect. How can I ignore that? I can't ignore it. It is there all the time. I know that everything has come out of the food, but what is before me is not food. It is just like a flower. What is it that has these propensities? As an integrated social self, I hear the music. How can I ignore that? What is that principle which is the substratum for all these experiences? You must find that out. The moment you awaken from sleep, you seem to know the whole world. This passing show, which is in a state of flux the whole time, is thrown like a picture on your beingness. To an illusion we are thinking that I have a separate personality, that I am a separate self. The consciousness which is all-pervading does not have this feeling of limited beingness. This all-pervading consciousness has no ignorance and no knowledge, but ignorance and knowledge take birth in it. When I ignite the cigarette lighter, you say that the flame is. When I put it out, you say that the flame is not. So also the flame of knowledge is and is not. Until such time as your words have stopped, there is meaning in the words, and there is nothing in the meaning also. The meaning is itself meaningless. If the words are meaningless, how should we listen to you? Don't listen to me. You listen to your own self at and find out how much you are in your own company. We do not know how to be with our own self. It is so ugly, we always run away from it. But you are caught up in it. Even if you call yourself ugly and do not like your own company, can you decide to take your food out of it and leave it? The seed that is sown is so small, and yet so many flowers, fruits, the tree trunk, and everything has come out of it. I eat all that and I eat the seed, and the seed is for my strength and contentment and satisfaction. When I become myself, I understand that beingness is with me. So many desires, so many dreams come on this body which knows I am. That beingness has taken hold of this elemental body. You must find out what is sustaining itself on the body which is its food. Birth and death are only terms, names. When death has come, it only means that the experience called birth is extinguished. When we hear Maharaj, an idea comes into the mind that death is wonderful and it can come soon and be forever. When the death is forever, it means that eternal, immutable Parabrahman. Besides listening to Maharaj, is there any other tablet to invite death? If you decide finally that you are not this body, the death will be final. Death will die. Therefore, try just to live without this consciousness of body and mind. The body is dependent on the essence of food. The food is dependent on the elements. And the elements are the life of that one which has no name. If you try to find out your beingness, that source from which you have come, there will be no name, no form, and no identity of your own. I am trying a new experiment. Whatever I am, I don't need to describe it, nor name it, nor question anything. Whatever I am, I am, and that's it. Not looking at whatever is as separate from me, but just to be. 
If you can imagine that, then by all means do. If you get peace and can understand the truth that way, that is very good. August 18th, 1979. Why is the understanding so fleeting, changing? It depends on the body sense. All people will receive the knowledge from here, but the behavior of each will be different from that of the others. Myself, I am holding on to the same consciousness, and the understanding which is reflected in that consciousness is changing completely from day to day. Oh, yes, this knowledge I am in the field of mind inclination. Mind understanding will not remain the same. It is changing every moment. It will never stabilize itself on one understanding. So there is no such thing as final understanding? The beginning and the end of this understanding is the knowledge I am. The beginning of concepts started with the primary concept I am. Having wandered through all the concepts and rejected them, you have to get rid of this last or the first concept. That rejection, does it come by the disappearing of the last concept, just by giving it attention? See this flame of the cigarette lighter? It has appeared. It has disappeared. It's just like that. Has it got any concept, this flame? What is without concept is the most perfect, the most proper. The witnessing has to be done when you try to concentrate on an objective. Suppose you want to concentrate on a Rama, a Krishna, or a Christ. Then there is a question of concentrating or watching. This is only the knowledge I am. The problem is, the more attention I give to consciousness, the larger the concept which appears in my mind. How do you focus attention on consciousness? Consciousness itself has the focus. That is what I meant. Understand consciousness and come to the conclusion that consciousness is not yourself. I can't. I cannot. Give it up. Whatever demands you make, I am not going to fulfill. I am not going to meet your demands. I am not going to give you whatever you want. I am just going to tell you to emphasize what you are. You want to convert or transform yourself into something. I want to become this. I am going to do that. I am going to tell you what is the root of you, the innermost core, what you are. I am not the sculptor. You see, I don't make images for you so that you become that image. Where does this need of consciousness to see itself as everything come from? You know that you are and you love to be, hence the necessity. Although you have been saying that you understood, there is some hitch somewhere, isn't there? One card. I am holding back one card. Throw it out. Where is the loss? Give up the game. You listen to my talks or don't listen. You come here or you don't come here. I know what you are. What you were prior to your I amness. Before your parents met, I know you. I know your knowingness after your parents met. How it got transformed to various stages. How it developed in different images. I know all that. Suppose a person is 125 years old. Since childhood, he has grown into various stages, learned a lot of worldly things. Now, whatever he has learned or gained, everything has gone, and he is lying on a bed. And what remains now? Only that child consciousness, that child ignorance remains. And that also will go. Will it go to heaven or hell? No. The ignorance has sprung up, and the ignorance will disappear. The question then is, if that ignorance can disappear only through that process of time, or can it be stopped now? Even in between. It is sustained by food and water. If this is not supplied, it will go, disappear. But it has gone in the case of Maharaj, and there is a supply of food and water there. So what I'm asking is, is that process inevitable, or can it just end now? You have to meditate. It won't be available free. The necessary threshold is through consciousness only. You have to imbibe and be consciousness. In the process of being in the consciousness, you come out of it. And there you see, and meditation is the only remedy. The more you get into consciousness, the more impossible it seems to transcend it. 
Give it a fair trial. Be in beingness. Try to be in beingness. You won't get it here and now. Step number one is be yourself. Be in your beingness only. Although to start with, I am the imminent spirit I am. You have to be in that beingness without the body sense. You feel that you are a body now, but when you abide in that beingness, you will know then how you are without the body. But don't forget at the same time that body and vital breath are very necessary. Once you understand these three entities correctly, body, vital breath, and the message, I am, then you are a part. The nor of these three entities will not be caught by the parents. When Maharaj was immersed in his beingness, what exactly did he understand that made him transcend consciousness? You know TV? Meditate and you will know as tangibly as you see TV. You will see then, I am not the TV screen. The observer of the TV is not in the set. In the process of meditation, more knowledge will be awakened, will be realized by you. And in that same process, you will understand that whatever you have understood, you are not. That's why I was saying before that the more consciousness was conscious of itself, the larger the concept, the knowledge. Yes, it will happen. A living cosmos, a million universes in your consciousness. What about the knower? The knower and whatever is known both will go. Nothing will remain stable, permanent. This triangle, father, mother, and you, how did it happen? Inquire about that, meditate on that. Isn't it the same thing, father, mother, and I, just a flow of that consciousness? Don't talk, try to understand. Just talking about eating will not fill your stomach. You have to actually eat. You will not get eternal peace with knowledge derived out of words, only by self-knowledge, self-realization. August 19th, 1979 How can I achieve what Maharaj speaks about? Remember your beingness. The knowledge that I am has come to you out of your sattva guna, that is beingness. Sattva, rajas, and tamas, three gunas are playing here in the manifestation. The quality of the sattva, the essence, is to know that you are and to provide you with that basis on which to act. Rajas is the motivating factor. It makes you move about. And tamas is inertia, consolidation. This knowledge I am comes to you after your body is born. After that, the body of childhood grows on its own and becomes old. What is left after all the ambitions, all the desires have been fulfilled? All the actions have been done in accordance with the natural disposition. What remains in the end is only one thing. I am. So all through life you have to remember to investigate who is this I am. Otherwise birth and death will have no meaning for your beingness. Because that beingness also will be dissolved after the death of the body. Beingness will be dissolved after the death of the body? This beingness is the quality of the essence of the food body. Actually, that beingness is living on the food that is your body. All bodies are food. That feeling of beingness appears in the body and is dissolved when the body drops away. Beingness means loving that feeling of self. Love is included in the beingness and that love grows as the body grows. For more and more love to be given to that beingness, so much manifestation, so many other things are required in order to satisfy that love. This I want for that comfort, comfort of the body and that beingness, the love to be. In order to satisfy that craving, you must have a wife, you must have a house, you must have clothes and other comforts, and this goes on. This beingness only creates karma. Actually, nobody is born and nobody dies. The fact is that beingness appears and beingness disappears. How could karma act from life to life and what about God? The one who understands the meaning of the word God is himself God. What remains after the knowledge of beingness dissolves? See, the cigarette lighter is lit. 
Now it is extinguished. But does it mean that it is dead? That beingness, when extinguished, is dissolved into Brahman from where it came. If beingness is dissolved, then there is no karma. If that beingness is not there, can there be actions? Where the beingness is there, the manifestation is there, and the actions happen in the realm of that consciousness. There is no doer. We erroneously claim to be the doer. That I amness is like a seed of the berry. In that berry seed, all the forest of berry trees is already present in potential condition. Likewise, this I amness is the seed of manifestation in which actions happen, and there is no doer. How is the seed formed? In a fruit? Out of the essence of the juice of that fruit, the seed is formed. What does it mean when the seed is formed? It is recording all the images of the formation of the tree already recorded in the tree itself, which will again, in due course, proliferate into another tree. But all this is recorded in the seed only. The same thing applies to the human seed. When the seed is planted, when does it record the image of the parents, so that that particular seed assumes the image of the father or the mother, gets a particular body form? What is the principle? Take, for example, the TV screen. On the screen you see all the images acting. These images are already recorded somewhere and are being played now. So they will not stop even if we shout and ask them to. That is one not very good example. The human or natural seed recording out of which the same or similar images grow is spontaneous, while the TV recording is out of the skill of the human intellect. In the Buddha's teaching, there is not a full solution. There are remaining aggregates that will form a new being. Whatever Buddha's philosophy is, these are all various ideas, various concepts. In each person, the ideas are sprouting. And when they spontaneously come out, he behaves accordingly. He follows those ideas because he likes them. They have come out of him. I am not inclined to follow various ideas or the judgment of others. Among the judgments, the best is given by Lord Krishna. He says we have to get out of our own judgment, our own concepts about ourselves. Do not depend on anybody else. Now you listen to these talks and realize your own ultimate position, your true position which you will not lose again. You stabilize there. My guru also indicated to me my ultimate destination, and I have stabilized myself in it. It occurs to one's attention that one is. When it was not in the attention of that one, was the principle not there? It was. That principle is unblemished and without attention. In non-attention, it prevails eternally. And what does it mean whatever acquired is surrendered and oblations to the Brahman? All this knowledge, this knowingness, is offered to Brahman. If the body is food for beingness, we shall feel insecure for the body. It will not be peace, quietness, because we shall be anxious for the beingness through the body. When you leave your body, who is the customer for that peace? Even if I am not identified with the body, but I know that it is food for the beingness, I feel anxious. It is good that you are careful and anxious to preserve the body, but remember that this manifested body is dependent on the essence of the food that you eat. Out of the essences or juices of vegetation, all species are formed. Insects animals, human beings, etc. This quality of beingness is in the juices, the vegetation, in a dormant condition. In each species, that knowingness is there, the principle just to know. It is not a question of whose knowingness, only beingness or knowingness is there. Are there different kinds of beingness? The expression of consciousness through different bodies is different. The body shape is different. The voice is different. Ideas are different. Sound is different. Tastes are different. It is infinitely varied. Well, how can the beingness be different? Beingness is only one. Sound as such is the same, but its expression through different instruments is different. 
Out of the same consciousness with the formation of a Krishna body, a Krishna is born. A donkey also is formed accordingly. Consciousness is the same. Are the gunas dependent on the food you eat, or are they already there? In the initial stage, it is all right for you to understand that everything potentially is this food value. You start with this food value and vital breath, this combination and that I amness. But later on, you have to investigate and understand how this I amness has come. You have to go to the root. Root means mula. Mula means child. How has that child formation taken place? In the process, when you go to the source itself, you will realize that I amness contains this manifested universe, like a seed. To understand more clearly, take the example of the dream world. You are in deep sleep, and suddenly you feel I am, and that I amness creates a dream world. Similarly, this manifest world is created by that I amness. You realize this later in the search for the truth. The last progress will be for you to transcend this I amness also and get stabilized in the ultimate. Don't presume that having understood all this worldly knowledge, you are full of wisdom. To think that will be something like being severely constipated. Whatever I have expounded to you is to be realized by the self. Before this beingness came to you, you were all the time there, but you were not conscious of it. The Absolute does not know itself at all. Our true state is not knowledge, but prior to knowledge. August 20th, 1979 Your philosophy starts where science ends. I have myself learned a lot in the field of medicine and elsewhere. But after reading your book, I have humbled myself at your feet. Who is the one you call Atman? Who is the knower and where is he situated in the body? If there is some injury or wound to the toe, you understand it, but from where does this understanding come? From the neck to the head, there is somebody who knows. Where is that knowledge situated? It is in the Brahmarandra, opening in the crown of the head. Some yogis collect all their vital breath there and steady themselves, but they do not understand the fundamental principle. A great man performed severe penance for a long time. In the end, a vision appeared before him. The great man was very dirty, so he said to the vision, I will clean myself and then meet you. When the man appeared completely clean, the vision ate him up. They became one, one beauty, bliss, and joy. All that you are experiencing now is what is to be discarded as dirty, and in what is to be discarded that one knowledge beingness is existing. What does this mean? That portion of the body below the neck is full of the stench of sour food. But it is in this body that the secret soul is living. It doesn't get dirty. That one lives here, and his life, his sensitivity or knowledge, has spread all through the body. It gives you everything that is beautiful, everything that is fragrant. Your existence is all-pervading. All the four Vedas do not know how to praise you. In the drop of I amness, all the universe is contained. Since you understand the drop, can you be the drop? I amness indicates the Parabrahman, but it is not the Parabrahman. Is the consciousness real or unreal? It is a dreaming consciousness. You are unreal. Therefore, the world is unreal. It is an illusion, Maya. Why is the illusion Maya creating all these embodied lives? The farmer produces grain in order to eat it, and Maya produces life in order to eat it. Maya doesn't live on life, but on the death of that life, because without these forms it cannot function. According to scientists, matter cannot be destroyed, it always gets transformed from one state to another. What is that state where there is no change, that immutable condition, the homogeneous state in which there is no I and no you? Nothing is there. Only that is the eternal truth. What is your real nature? How do you identify yourself? If you identify with the body along with the body, you will die. I am trying to break this identity with the ego. 
To feel that you are an individual is itself a conditioning. The one who wants to break the conditioning is also imaginary. How can you destroy an ego which is not there? The knowledge I am is the first ignorance, and whatever knowledge you acquire with it is ignorance. Go back to the source of your ignorance. With half knowledge, we think we are full of wisdom, profound. That is our presumption. When we are without thoughts, then only are we profound. Realize the thought-free state. Don't worry about other people and other things. Do your own research. Try to find out how you happen to be. The principle which understands its language is the mind. In the end, both whatever is understood and the one who understands are liquidated. Many people have understood, and they have gone into quietude. August 21st, 1979 Consciousness is everywhere, latent or otherwise. First there is consciousness, then came everything, the sky, the earth, and all. This consciousness, it is not the same as the I am, the self-consciousness, is it? Whenever we think of consciousness, we think of the body, but that is an air. The original state was there before the waking and sleep states. The I am dissolves after death, so it is not the same. Are you speaking now of the individual personality or the universal consciousness? The universal self. The consciousness that prevails is the universal consciousness. The world is born out of that, and not from the point of view of the individual personality. What is the relationship between the universal consciousness and the I amness? The spark of the incense stick and the whole of it. That is the relationship. That consciousness which prevails before you are aware of the two states is the universal consciousness. You will not learn this through your thoughts, but when you meditate, that consciousness of being will merge into universal consciousness, and only in that way will you understand it. The universal consciousness has always been, its power always present. Its power of creation has given rise to this world. It has produced this prakriti and purusa, and its soul is the individual consciousness. It is spontaneous, manifest, dynamic spirit. It has no aspect. It is all-pervading. I am talking about that Vedic principle, Vedic raw material, out of which this flow has started. That universal life force pervades everything, but it has no personality or individuality. How does one witness the thoughts, the concepts? It goes on automatically. You are always aware of those concepts and thoughts. I know it after, but not during. If you suddenly want to go someplace, you get up and go. You know that. So what is the question of another witness? You were sitting for meditation this morning, and when the bhajan started, you got up and left. That walking out happened, didn't it? Do you want any other dimension to witness it? Again, the same question. Can we be a witness of our own minds? In the morning, your mind directed you to leave, and you walked out. Is it not witnessing? Yes, I can witness one movement but I cannot be witness to my thought during the thought process. The consciousness is acting as a whole. No doer is there. We look at ourselves as doers, and therefore we want to witness it, which cannot be done. Therefore you abide in the words of the guru, which you are. You are the all-pervading subtle principle, subtler than space. Identify yourself with that. A person wants to attain peace through meditation, samadhi, etc. But it is a temporary peace, because, as you say, it is a product of the body. How is one to get eternal peace? You witness that peace. So there is peace, and the witness. Be there. In due course, both this peace and the witness will go. What remains is the absolute. This is very subtle, the last stage. 
There is nothing tangible there to understand with the gross senses. This is only to be experienced. After listening to these talks, you leave this place and tell people, For God's sake, don't go there. My head is full of turmoil. It is all confusion. Whatever sense I had, whatever understanding I had, it is all gone. Some people do witness their past lives. How is that? That's because they believe it. Just like the promises of politicians. It's all talk. The Tibetans choose their Lama because he is a reincarnation. It is a traditional concept, and we do not take any note of such concepts. If you want any reply, we will become whatever concept we entertain at the time of death. It will take concrete shape according to the concept. If I have the concept of God at the time of death, will I become God? But you must also have a concept of what kind of God, forearm, three-headed, or ten-headed. The trouble is, all of you want to derive some benefit from your concepts and ideas. Don't employ any thoughts for your use. Without recourse to thought, understand and remain. It is not possible for people of ordinary needs or intellect to come here. It must be an evolved soul who can think of coming here. This one comes daily. Do you think it is an individual's need or a body need? No. It means that the soul wants to return to its source. The great saint Tukaram said, I want to return to my mother's home. Someone was telling me of an experience he had after visiting Maharaj. Some people who have visited here have had experiences, and they call Maharaj great, etc. Whom are they calling great? I am nothing. I am completely void. How is one to get out of this vicious circle? You are caught in this vortex. If you want to escape, you must go to the center. Dive deep inside. The vicious circle of life, death, rebirth, etc. started with consciousness. Try to understand that consciousness. And in the process of understanding, you will become its background, the basis. August 22, 1979 I can see that unless there is a center within me, I cannot conduct myself. After attaining that center, unfortunately for my life, a psychological condition appeared. In my body there are certain sensitivities, certain throbbings going on which give me pleasant or unpleasant sensations. I would like to know why they are there. These sensations arise because the elements have created duality. Duality also means a sort of chaos and disagreement. So wherever there are elements, there will be a quarrel among them. Therefore, they give you these pleasant or unpleasant sensations. Whatever we eat gives us the experiences we call pleasant or unpleasant. Whatever agreement or disagreement there is among the elements has to be endured by everyone. The Vedas have told you the way of behavior. It is very necessary for a person to understand these scriptures because they provide some kind of path, how to behave, how to conduct yourself. It is so wonderful, so amazing that that essence through you has taken the form I know and consciousness has appeared in this body in the form I am. And following that consciousness, a big account has also been opened up. How does Maharaj look upon us? I am the knower of the universal life, and I look upon you also as one like me. But I know that you do not know what you are. I understand from what platform you are talking and what your nature is, I also know. If you become a Yani, you sort of feel proud. I have acquired this, have done this, but it is not going to last. All life is universal life. It has nothing to do with an individual. There is no sense in taking pride in whatever I know or I have done in life. Is what Maharaj calls the sense the same as intelligence? It is all this one, but whatever is here is made impure by gunas. That is the state of beingness, the knowledge I am. Isn't there some direction for that intelligence from inside? Inside of what? What are you directing your attention to? 
toward the human body. One experiences this sense or this intelligence, and at the same time experiences many things which appear false, which are still in the form of elements. It creates so many problems. How does one act on it? That particle from which this birth has come includes scores of elements. Close your eyes and you will see. It is the seed of the whole universe, the smallest, the atomic, and yet it contains scores of universes within the seed. Have we just to live with them and not do anything about them? Can we not act on the potentialities? With what are you going to act? Before eating food, you can do anything with it, but once it goes into your stomach, what can you do with it? The consciousness is doing whatever is being done to the food. What are you doing? Try to experiment in the dream world. No, I don't have any dream world. I am thinking of myself, the elements which are in me, in this body. I am acting from that. For the sake of that, many births will come. You are not the body. You do not have a personality. You are the universal life. This is all universal life. Why do you consider yourself some particular individual and suffer? August 23rd, 1979 How long have you been wearing this garb, ochre robes? Twenty-five years. Have you realized yourself? I am not realized. I am just wandering about, as you say, in the dark jungle, going here and there. Who is it that says this? Probably the self. Remember that whatever is called God or self is in the body, and as long as he is there, that beingness will be also. When beingness is not there, there will be no God, no self. When a person dies, it is not the self that is turned into a corpse. It is the body. It is true. You see, I understand all that theoretically. I know it is a philosophy, but to experience the void, to know the real, I am as far away as possible. Whatever is called God or self is because there is the beingness, the feeling that I am. That is the fundamental principle, the basis behind all your knowledge. But you are identifying yourself with the body. True. When there is no soul, there is no God. And when you are not there, your feeling of beingness is not there. There is nothing. I understand the theory of it. I have read so many books, but how to realize it? When you understand the meaning of the words, you must find out who it is that understands. You see, that is the gap. To know is very difficult. That which is going to turn into a corpse, you are calling that me, I. This is the sin that you are committing and the obstacle between you and the knowledge. That is the difference. That gap needs to be bridged. All these words are absolutely unnecessary. Because you are, there is the light, the light of knowledge. And when you are gone, the light of knowledge will be extinguished. Did not your guru tell you this? It's just like saying that this candy is sweet. Do you get the taste of it? Has not your guru told you whatever you are hearing now? Yes, yes. That means that you do not agree with him. You still have not trusted him. I agree. I trust, but maybe I'm lacking in effort. You are lacking in nothing. You have understood yourself as a corpse, a body. Are you that which is going to be extinguished? I know I am not. Then what kind of sadhana are you going to perform? If you are not that which is going to be extinguished, you are not going to die. I understand that position. It is not that I don't understand. Why are you traveling around then? I am looking for something. I am trying to find something I have not been able to find. You say that you understand, and yet you say that you don't get it. So, are you telling a lie? I don't know myself. You see, for me, it is all there. I know you don't have to go about. You sit in one place in your home, and, and you find it out. But I have yet to get it. So the thought comes to go around. That impatience to find out which drives me from one place to another place till one finds something. Well, I haven't found it. The day I find it, then I also will say, yes, it is within. When you close your eyes, inside you see Ganesan, darkness, with the feeling, I am. And when you open your eyes, the same, 
shows you what is outside. You do not have to think to perform that act. All has appeared without your active contribution. That is the philosophy of it, but doing it is the difficult part, very difficult. Why are you not taking delivery of that fact? What is the use of wandering from place to place? You are defaming the ochre robes. True. You see, your soul is so wonderful, so great, and so important that if you sit in a barren land, it will be filled with beautiful gardens. You do not understand your own greatness, the knowledge that you are, your beingness. No, I am not great. I am very humble, very small. What is humble and what is small? What is there without your beingness? Even if you perform great penances, you can, at the most, punish your body. Can you punish your beingness? No. When they send a man to the gallows, can they hang his soul, his beingness? This body is hanged. Can you possibly punish the beingness? No. So he is not humble or small. He enjoys all the wonderful qualities, but he is absolutely unattached, not smeared by any of them. You see, your attire is showing you have that. We don't wear such attire. Nobody will call me a Mahatma. I am not a Mahatma. Then why are you wearing these robes? You don't worry about what you are telling others by wearing such robes, but you enjoy the feeling, I am the great Mahatma. I am the greatest of all because you know and yet you do not enjoy that knowledge. It is a sin for which you will have to suffer. If a great soul, a Mahatma, calls you a fool, you have to suffer it. If the Mahatma calls anybody a fool, he has to suit her. And you are calling yourself something not knowledgeable yet, not knowing. That is the sin you commit. You are abusing your great soul. I do not want to teach anything to anybody. I only hold up a mirror to those who come here. I will make you stand before the mirror and look at yourself. You have to get the vision of yourself in the light that is emanating from your own self. At Bajans we say, you close your eyes and see that everywhere. He is standing. Everywhere, inside, outside, up, down. And that you have to experience. If God is not residing in your body, you will not be there. True, what this clear vision Maharaj can see and say, I can say, but not see. If you do not recognize him right now in this birth, several thousands of births will not give you the opportunity to know him. At least now would you try to catch hold of him with concentrated attention? One does try. Who is that one and who is trying? Why are you worried about others? What about you? I am addressing this to you. That, to me, means the same thing as I answered. It's addressed to the self, and the self is answering. I have not asked you what the self is doing. I am asking you, what are you doing about you? Where's the difference? Are I and the Atma two different things? You see, when you talk, you refer to the consciousness that is limited to your body. If you refer to the universal consciousness, that Atma or God, therefore you make it clear whether you refer to yourself as limited or unlimited. I am limited, as I have been told. I understand that I should say that I am unlimited. With the knowledge I have, with what teachers have told me, I am unlimited. And yet I know that I am limited. Because you identify with the body, that is why you are conditioning yourself. True, I understand that. I know that I should get over that. By your identification with the manifest body, you have lost sight of your real nature. You must always be conscious of that. That state of consciousness is a natural thing. Only don't break away from it. You see, I don't disclose the acrobatics of the Vedas to the masses here. It is for other people to do who dabble in body-mind. There is so much knowledge printed and disseminated here, there, everywhere. Yet I would say that the majority of people live in darkness in spite of that knowledge. I don't ask anybody to follow any particular path. I just tell them to be what they are, in their natural state, spontaneous state, stabilized there, in the beingness.
Those are exactly the same words as Baba uses, just be. Having served him for twenty-five years, why did you deny? I don't know.